Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial. Today we're going to be doing ore generation. So the block that I'm going to be generating is the example block we made in the previous episode. However, I'm going to change the property to be the same as iron ore. So all we have to do is remove this dot create here and replace it with dot from. And then we can just pass in the blocks. So in my case, it's going to be blocks dot iron ore. And now let's close this bracket. And now our custom block has the same properties as the default Minecraft iron ore. Now inside our init package, let's create a new class. This class is going to be called feature init. And in here, we're going to initialize all of our features. So first, let's create a function which is going to initialize our ore. So let's create a public static void and let's call it add ore. So first, this is going to take a final biome loading event event and from this event we need to get the generation settings so let's do event dot get generation and to that we need to add our all feature so let's do dot with feature now first this takes a generation stage so let's do generation stage dot decoration dot underground ores and for our configured feature we use feature and let's select the minecraft.worldgen.feature dot or and because this is a configured feature we need to do with configuration and now let's add a semicolon however right now we don't have a configuration so the ore doesn't know what blocks to spawn with and how frequently it should spawn so let's create our new or feature config and this all feature config class actually takes a rule test, which tells us what blocks our ore can spawn in, the block state, which is the block that it's going to spawn, and the size of the vein that it's going to spawn. Because this add ore is a general method for all of our different ores, we can just pass those values in. So at the top, let's add rule test, rule, block state, state, and finally int vein size and now we can just put rule state and vein size into this constructor then we need to give it a placement so after the with configuration let's do dot with placement and now we need to give it a configured placement so let's use placement dot range dot configure and this is going to take a top solid range config so let's create that new top solid range config and this is going to take three values the minimum height at which it can spawn the offset from the top of the world at which it can spawn and the maximum height for the top offset that's just going to be zero and this will allow our ore to be placed at any offset for the minimum and maximum height we can just pass those in so let's do int min height and int max height and then we can just put those into here finally let's go three brackets out not all the way and then type dot square and finally dot and then we need to set up the amount as you can see this function is actually called func 242731b so make sure you select the right function and then let's set the amount and once again we can pass that in as another integer so let's do int amount Actually, all Minecraft functions have these kinds of names, but we use something called MCP, which converts them into names like these. But unfortunately, not all functions have been mapped yet, so you'll still get some functions specifically to do with world gen that will look a bit complicated. So now that we've created our add or function, let's actually create our add ors, where we can initialize all the ors that we're going to add. So let's do another public static void let's call it add ors and this is going to take a final biome loading event event and now in here we can actually call this add or function for every or that we want to add so let's do add or let's pass in the event and now we just need the rule test block state vein size minimum height maximum height and amount so we can actually use a default minecraft rule test or a custom rule test which basically defines 
which blocks our block can spawn in. For this all, I'm going to use a vanilla one. So I'm going to use all feature config dot filler block type dot base stone overworld, which will allow it to spawn in any overworld block. Now for our block state, we can just use block init dot our example block, which is the block we're going to spawn dot get and then dot get default state. Now we need to pass in our vein size, minimum height, maximum height and amount. So for the vein size, I'm just going to put something like four. So there's four ores in one vein. Next for the minimum height, I'm just going to leave it at zero to allow it to spawn at any Y level. And then I'm going to cap the maximum at 60. So now it will spawn at any place below 60. And finally, the amount is the amount of veins that will generate per chunk. So I'm just going to set this to 20. This is very high, probably higher than iron, but I'm just doing this. So I'll be able to find it quite easily when I'm testing. If you want to add another ore, you can just copy and paste this down here. And I'm still going to use my example block, but this time we can change this to something else. This time we can change the default Minecraft rule test to a custom one. So there's actually two very important rule tests that you should know about. First of all, we have the block match rule tests, which literally just takes a block. So we can do block in it dot example block dot get. This is a bit useless, but right now our example block will only spawn in blocks that are example blocks. The other one is the tag match rule test, which basically takes a block tag. If you don't know what a block tag is, you can basically allow it to spawn in any log, in any stone type. So this is very, very useful. So I'm actually going to leave this and go to block tags, which are the default Minecraft tags, and then just search for leaves. And this way my all will now spawn in leaves. Finally, we need to call this feature init class. So in our main class, before we register the main class, we need to register our feature init to the event bus. So let's do Minecraft forge dot event bus dot add listener. And if we want to do basically anything with world generation, we need to give it a high priority. So let's do event priority dot high and then actually give it our all function. So let's do feature in it and then statically reference the add alls. And there we go. Now our alls should spawn into the game. So let's load the game and see what happens. So once we're in the game, let's just create our world. And there we go. If we go underground below Y level 60, we can actually see our example all spawning. Thank you for watching. The code for this video is in the description. If you need any help, you can DM me on Discord. And if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you next time.